Hey, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today on Boo Ray Explains, we're going to talk about focal length. All right, before we get started, as always, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts can be found. Also, be sure to join my group on Facebook. It is called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And follow me on Instagram at Boo Ray Perry. Now, focal length. Well, <laughs> okay. Focal length is kind of tricky and kind of technical, and we're going to have to do some charts and some graphs, which is why a lot of people have a hard time with focal length. But I'm going to try and walk you through it step by step so that you understand it. But unfortunately, we're going to have to go to the charts and the graphs. So to understand focal length, you have to understand how the inside of a lens works. And it's, it's going to seem a little complicated when I'm drawing it out here, but we're going to take it step by step, and it, it really isn't that hard. So let's start with the front of the lens. At the front of the lens, you're going to have a piece of glass, right? So this is your front of your lens. Now, a lens can be one piece of glass, like the lens that's in your glasses, right? Or it can be a bunch of pieces of glass, like a modern camera photography lens can have 14, 15 pieces of glass in there, lots of elements of glass, they call them. And, and these elements of glass are all there to try and focus and direct light so that it gets to your sensor in the best way possible, right? So that's what they do. We're going to just start with one lens at the front of your camera. And then back here at the end of the lens, or I should say the tube, the housing that holds the lens, is your sensor. So the light's going to pour into the lens and it's going to hit your sensor. Now, it's going to come in, and I'm going to start. I can't actually touch this or else it'll, it does this. <laughs> so i got to do this. So the light is coming in like this. Right? So this is all the light. Everything that's encompassed in this area out here is the light that is coming into the lens and then hitting your sensor. And where all of this light crosses, this point right here, this is called the optical center of your lens. This optical center is going to be a certain distance from your sensor. And that distance, when measured in millimeters, is the focal length of your lens. All right, it's pretty simple, right? All the light comes in. To the camera lens, the glass is in that camera lens, directs all of that light so that it crosses and hits your sensor perfectly. The spot where it crosses, now sometimes this is a spot in space and sometimes it's an actual lens. There'll be a piece of glass there that is the optical center. And the place where it crosses is the optical center of the lens. And the distance of that optical center from the sensor, that is the focal length. So the focal length of your lens, in this case, would be, let's say, 25 millimeters. So this brings us to the next question of, okay, so how come a 200 millimeter lens is a telephoto lens? And a 25 millimeter lens is a, a wide angle lens. Well, again, let's look at the construction of the inside of the lens. So let's say you've got your lens here, except now you're going to put your sensor way back here. So now, instead of having this short lens, we've got a very long tube, right? A long lens. Now, in order for the light to come in and hit the corners, hit the edges, the top and the bottom of your sensor, it cannot come in as steeply as it is coming in on the short, right? So let's say we start here, where it's coming in, and we draw to here, and then we start here, and we draw to here. Now, look at where your optical center is. Your optical center now is further from, uh, let me get my thing here, boom. Your optical center now is, let's say, 100 millimeters. So it's 100 millimeters from the optical center to this sensor right here because you've made the entire tube longer. And when you make the entire tube longer, the angle of attack of these light rays has to become more narrow. Also, look at what's happening outside here. Look at this angle, and then look at this angle. This angle right here, that's almost, almost a 90 degree angle. But this angle right here, that's much wider. 
right? So if you've got something that you're taking a picture of, let's say this triangle, right? And you're taking a picture of this triangle, and you're taking a picture of this triangle with both of these lenses, and the triangle is about the same size, right? Here it is. Look at the distance that you have above and below the triangle when you're using the 25 millimeter, and look at the distance that you have above and below when you're not when you're using the 100 millimeter. So you see how this is a much wider angle of attack at the top. So this, a 25 millimeter lens, is really wide, and a 100 millimeter lens is really, really narrow. And that's why the bigger the number, the more telephoto or more narrow your angle of view will be with your lens. So now we understand focal length, right? We understand how focal length works, why it's called focal length, what that distance actually is, how it affects your pictures, and that's fantastic. But there's probably two questions that you have in your mind right now. Number one is going to be, okay, Boo I understand 50 millimeter lens and that gives me a particular field of view, but how come I get a different field of view when I'm using a different camera? How come a full frame camera gives me a different field of view than an APS-C camera? Well, I'm going to answer that question, I promise. I'm just not going to do it in this video because I don't want to pile on too much stuff in one video. And the second question you have is, how is this going to help me become a better photographer? It's not. It's really not. <laughs> it's really not. It's like understanding how the catalytic converter works in your car doesn't help you become a better driver it's just kind of nice if you understand how your car works and it's the same way with photography so understanding exactly about you know how the 50 millimeter the length from the optical center and this is how they measure it and this is how they decide what the focal length is it doesn't really make you a better photographer what's really important is that you know that a 16 millimeter lens is a wide angle lens and the 50 millimeter lens is not uh, they actually have names I wrote them down they let me get those names for you. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget them. If it's under 24 millimeters, it's ultra wide. If it's 24 to 35 millimeters, it's wide. If it's 35 to 70, it's standard. If it's 72 to 300, it's telephoto. And if it's over 300, it's called a super telephoto. Again, not really necessary. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to be teaching in this, in, in this series is stuff that you don't really have to know in order to become a better photographer. But if you're a geek like me and you just like to know how things work, it's just nice to understand how these lenses work, what focal length is, and how it is determined. And now, well, now you know. Go back and watch the rest of the series if you're just starting with this because I start at the very beginning and explain the basics of photography. My goal when I'm finished is to basically explain everything. Thanks for watching.